everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today it's time for the July Scroller Box Unboxing. This is the UK's monthly art subscription box and you pay a little bit of money every month and they send you some goodies with a little magazine, a sticker and a featured artist but more importantly an art prompt so that you can create an artwork to a theme with the supplies that come in the box. So let's see what we've got. Oh, pretty colours. So this is our scroller zine. This is the information, um, some arty stuff that goes on in there. So we'll look at that last once we've had a wee look at the supplies. So we have our featured artist here and this looks like ink or maybe watercolour and the colours are so pretty together. So nice. A very summery as well. I like it. So the artist is Jess Kirkman. She's an award-winning artist and designer who specialises in alcohol inks, so I was right. So there's a little bit about Jess here and also links to her social media if you want to check out some more of her work if you like what you see here. I like it, it's very nice. So we have a surface to art on and this is an A5 Upo pad and it's 10 sheets at 100 GSM. So I'm assuming that this is paper designed specifically for um, some alcohol inky type stuff. So we've got our wee sticker, which usually matches the artwork. Um, ooh, oh, this one might be quite difficult, actually. On this side. Uh, yeah, in there somewhere. Whee! There we go. <laughs> Maybe? Mm. Oh, this might be a scaled down version, actually. Oh, can't fit it into the design. That's disappointing. That's my little like jigsaw puzzle that I do every month. Okay, we've got the list of supplies, which is now in a square format instead of the old bookmark. So we'll put that to the side for the moment. Oh, that's the other thing that Scroller Box always give you as well is a sweet. And it is a drumstick bar and it's bubblegum flavour. These are amazing, but they stick to your teeth. So uh, if you have any fillings or anything, you might want to keep away from that. It does also say it's vegan on it. So if you're of the vegan persuasion, you can partake this month. We've got a diddly little paintbrush. We have a Pro Art Master Stroke, and this is a series 60 round, and it's a number one round. Uh, craft and decorative, so maybe a slightly more hardy brush than for painting. Weenie, 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 wee brush. Gem Gem loves a weenie brush, so we can test that out just shortly. We have got a straw. Now, I know what this is for. If you've got your, uh, if you dump your ink on the paper, you <sighs> down the straw and it goes <clears throat> like this and makes all lovely patterns. So this is going to be an interesting box for sure. We've also got a pipette as well. I love it when we get pipettes in boxes. It's something I use all the time. I do have a scientific background, so I've got hundreds of these kicking about. Um, and they're so, so handy for any any liquid media at all. They're really good because they're clean and uh, they save your fingers a lot of the time as well. So thank you, Scroller Box. appreciate that. And here we go. What have we got? We have got uh, alcohol ink. So this looks like, oh, I was going to say this is like a clear one, but it's diamond sparkle and there's a little ball bearing in there. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see the sparkles. Um, there, I, I can see like metallic pigment in there, um, but I don't think I'll be able to see it on the camera just because the label's in the way. So we've got a sparkly one. Caribbean. Oh, so that's like a nice blue colour. Oh, this is exciting. I'm, I'm excited here. Um, what else have we got? We've got an extender. So I'm assuming that this acts like a, like a fluid retarder and stops it drying quickly. So it gives you longer to play about with it before it fixes itself to the paper. And we also have a magenta. Magenta. So we've, we've basically got the colours that have been provided here which is really nice that's very very rare that that happens so we've got sparkly ones and we've got the two colors and we've also got this extended as well so these are marabou inks uh, I, I am familiar with marabou i haven't had a lot of their products i did try some markers of theirs at one point so that's it uh, that's very interesting indeed and that is it for our supplies so let's take a look at the wee card here and see what we can learn. The alcohol inks, uh, obviously they're alcohol based, that kind of kind of goes without saying. Let's zoom in a wee bit here. Permanent inks take fluid painting to a whole new level, offering unlimited design possibilities with a wide range of flow techniques. The brilliantly bold and bright colours are quick drying, acid free and you can and can also be mixed to create your own colour combinations. These inks are best used on a non-absorbent paper but they can also be used on any smooth non-absorbent surfaces such as glass, metal, ceramic or porcelain. The creative possibilities and applications are endless. The recommended retail price is £4.99 each. The ink extender, this is what I'm interested in, 
The inks are perfectly complemented by the ink extender. The extender is an indispensable supply for many techniques and can be used not only to increase the alcohol ink's workable time, and it says in brackets slowing the drying time, which is what I'd said earlier, but also to lighten the pigment, lift colour and increase the transparency of your inks. Experiment to create a number of stunning effects. Uh, now this is quite interesting from a purely scientific point of view. This suggests to me that it's basically just pure alcohol, um, because that would give you a dilution. Uh, right, okay, that's quite interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go and look this up and satisfy my, my own my own geekiness. Uh, but that that makes sense. Uh, and increase the transparency of your inks. Experiment to create a number of stunning effects. And it says underneath, warning, alcohol inks are highly flammable and give off harmful fumes when in use. Please use in a well-ventilated area or use protective breathing apparatus. Stay safe. Uh, yeah, alcohol, obviously, it's going to be a bit whiffy. You might get a bit a bit squiffy from the whiffy. Um, so if you have any concerns about that or you're sensitive to chemical smells like me, it might be an idea to try and do this outside or in a room where there's a large area but also you can open windows and doors and keep your pets out of the way as well. Pipette, this versatile little tool is fantastic for mixing and adding ink to your work. You can use it for marbling, mixing colours or applying your inks and extender directly to paper. Recommended retail price, price 59 pence. <laughs> paper straw, uh, useful tool will help you create magical patterns in your ink with a gentle puff of air. Just try not to breathe in the fumes. So we've got this little paintbrush as well. The paintbrush is well suited for all of your painting needs. It can be used for watercolour, acrylic, oil and alcohol mediums as the tip is made from durable synthetic fibres. See, that was my kind of thought. If they tout something as a craft brush, normally a craft brush, is a, the bristles are a little bit more hardy than the likes of the synthetic bristles you would find in uh, watercolour brushes. And the paper. It's a non-porous, acid-free and pH neutral synthetic paper. Uh, the good thing about acid-free papers is that they, basically that stops the paper yellowing over time. So if your artwork is going to be on display or it's something that you, you know, you want to give to someone, you know that it's not going to be like sort of yellow, that sort of slightly dirty looking way in, in, a, in a couple of years time. It's completely waterproof, stain resistant and is an intriguing alternative to traditional art papers. Ten sheets included, you have plenty to test out and experiment with this month's supplies. And it's quite cheap as well, it says the recommended retail price is £2.98 so it's not an expensive supply if you wanted to buy some more. Okay, uh, oh my goodness, oh, what are you doing to me? The scrawler challenge is Nebula. Now that's quite interesting because our prompt for our upgrade was your galaxy, so we're staying with this intergalactic theme. This month's box is going intergalactic. Pour, dip and tip the ink to experiment with the abstract fluid forms it creates. Use the tool to drip, drop and blow around the ink to see what unique marks you can create. Try swirling your paintbrush in while wet and then back in again once dry with the extender to see how it expands your galactic arrangements. Oh god, this is fun. So yes, Nebula, a glowing form of clouds made up of interstellar gas and dust. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a quick look at the scroller zine and then we're going to test out the supplies and we'll try and do something with the prompt. So the first page is just a sort of an overview of the supplies, so we've already talked about that. Then we have a sit down with the artist, so this is Jess Kirkman here, what a pretty lady with a nice smile she is. And they have a little chat about her artwork and the things that she does and you can see some of her artworks here and they're like lovely, they're intriguing. Absolutely intriguing. This is so far removed from anything I would do, so I'm fascinated by stuff like this. That's so cool. So I like to read these kind of sections, sitting down with a cup of tea, that's that's my kind of, my vibe. Okay, we have some scroller tips for the alcohol inks, so let's have a wee look through these. Before you get started, it's worth noting you should protect your work surface, ink stains, everything, including hands, so gloves are recommended. It's also handy to have some paper towels or rag to absorb ink. Alcohol ink lids are notoriously difficult to remove. Try pressing the cap on its side with your thumb until it pops open, then remove. Gently does it. Tip the ink slowly to avoid ink spray. Yeah, that popped into my head there when adding to the page and when raising back off the page. If you want to make, mix the colours, it's best to use a palette or pot to mix inks before adding to the page. Well, I, I tend to use ceramic palettes, so I think I'm all sorted for that. 
Use the straw to create a wispy effect, blow gently through the straw to move the ink around the page, switch up the direction to get the full effect, try not to breathe in, it's best to avoid inhaling the fumes. Okay, she's talking about the extender here. The extender will help blend and move inks and can reactivate them once dried, just like water into watercolour paints. Okay. Let the ink dry on the page and then activate small sections with the extender for better control. You can also work back in with the extender to lighten and remove ink colours. To create a dot or drip pattern, use the wrong end of the paintbrush to dot on the extender into your artwork. Oh, that's quite interesting. Bonus tip, try using a black fine liner to add some line work. Solvent based markers are best like a sharpie. We know this isn't included in technically cheating for the challenge, but we will let you off this once. Okay, so we're allowed to use a fine liner as well, which is kind of cool. Notes from the artist. An important note about alcohol inks is let the inks guide you, not the other way around. Alcohol inks are all about letting go of control, so go with that uncomfortable feeling of the medium. Be patient with yourself and know that learning the ins and outs of a specific medium takes time. I was actually talking about this uh, with watercolour in my last video, so that's quite interesting that that's popped up now. Use more alcohol or extender on your piece when you're first starting out. This will allow the inks to blend together in special ways and from there you can add details as the piece dries. Don't expect to pick the medium up immediately. Practice a lot to get familiar with the medium and learn how the inks work almost scientifically before you try to create anything specific. Well, we're not going to do that because that's not fun. Use colours that you know will blend well together as a nice way into using inks. The magenta and the Caribbean blue will create a beautiful purple when blended. So they're, they're giving us a little a little handhold in here to get us into it. I, mean, I know that some of you have used alcohol inks in the past, so this might not be a thing for you. So here we have the Scrawler Gallery, and this is from the May box, and I loved this box eventually. I wasn't keen on the pencil combination that we'd been given, and then I ended up really enjoying myself and drawing my little uh, nighttime activated secret garden, and these are lovely. I really like this one down here by Trinkety. This is adorable. This is so, so, so cute. Someone's gone really bold, bold here as well. <laughs> so we're talking a, a little bit about nebulas and things on this side. And they finally, uh, they're addressing the price changes to the box. The price of Scholar Box is going up. Uh, it hasn't changed. It's been the same price since they've started. So I knew that this was going to happen at some point. The fact that they've added in a few more things, you know, like the magazine wasn't there originally when they first started to. Now, I can't say for absolute certain, this is just off the top of my head, the price increase isn't much. I normally pay for the scroller box with a yearly subscription, so I'm maybe not quite as aware of the, you know, the, the intricacies of the changes, but I think it's gone up something like £30 for the year. Now, obviously, the more boxes you pay for in advance, because I think they do monthly, six monthly and yearly subscription options, and the more you get, the bigger a discount you get. But I'm almost sure for, for a yearly subscription, it's £30 extra for the year. So when you spread that out over 12 boxes, it's not, it's not a huge price increase. So there we go, that is that. We are all done. I'm, I'm actually really excited about this box uh, because it's something that I've never used before. And this really sort of lends into the fact that it's, I'm gonna be playing about with this, which is my favorite thing to do. And you know, one of the reasons I started the channel in the first place. So I'm actually look, really looking forward to this. And because it's a new medium to me, obviously I've got no uh, no expectations of myself here. So I'm just going to tidy up a little bit, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll kind of set up a bit, and you know, protect the desk and whatnot, and then we can test these supplies out, and then we'll maybe have a go at actually doing something for the challenge. Okay, so I'm all set up, ready to go. Obviously, I've taken my watch off. I've I've got quite an attractive stripe there. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a pair of nitrile gloves. It's really nice. I've got my own box of these because the boys on the farm have got much bigger hands than me. <laughs> they can't get their hands into these gloves. So I've always got gloves to hand. So I've got, uh, some of you will recognise this as well. If you're a veteran caver, you'll remember this. This uh, used to sit on my desk way back at the beginning. I've got my little ceramic palette here just so that we can have a little go with these so i'm uh, i'm quite curious about this so let's see what happens let's try the colors first because uh, that's interesting now what do we have to do with these i think we have to cut the top off of these oh wow <laughs> uh, okay first injury of the day that is really really strong wow <laughs> oh, i've got it on me i'm so glad i put gloves on that is super super strong I think uh, this might be an issue for me. I'm quite prone to migraines, so, mm, you know. 
I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me there's an easier way to do that, um, which is fine. I'm, I'm not, adv not adverse to getting some help with that. And this is the sparkly one. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, none of the other ones have got a ball bearing in it, just the, just the sparkly one. That's obviously to mix the, the metallic pigment up. It's really difficult to see where the stopper is with this as well. Do you know what I'm going to do? Oh, that is, the smell of this is so strong. I don't know where that went. Oh, yes, super sparkly. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> that's a, I'm going to hold this up. I just want to see if you can see that on the camera. Can you see the shimmer in there? It's lovely. Oh, I'm right into this. Uh, yeah, uh, obviously I've got all the windows and everything open in the cave. Uh, I'm right at the window, you know, the, the desk here sits right at the window, which is great as well. Um, so we're, we're pretty safe that way. But if you are prone to migraines or anything, honestly, I would seriously consider not doing this because it is really, really strong. So obviously I've started a design anyway. Oh dear. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to grab a couple of pipettes. Technically, we should be able to clean these out with pure alcohol, but I've, I would imagine that the ink will stain, so I wouldn't be using them for another purpose. I've got one for the sparkly pigment, one for the blue, and one for the magenta. So I really just want to see what happens. Let's use them neat to start with. I say this is all completely new to me. Now, the paper is very, very smooth. Pretty sure when I was about 13, I had nail polish that was more sparkly like that. Okay, so it is spreading quite quickly. I can see that it's still very wet. So it's starting to dry already. And the blue is almost completely dry. Okay, so that's your standard drying time with just what's there. And you can see how vibrant these colours are. That's amazing. Oh, look at the purple. Okay, the straw is very handy. And we're almost going into quite a dark colour up here as well. So let's grab the extender and see what happens if we pop a couple of drops on something that's dry. Okay, that is, that is very, see if you, that's just one drop and it's going, it's going everywhere. I'm going to put it in here as well. So you can see what's happening up here and it is diluting it very well. Now, interestingly, if I just squish a wee bit of this out in my palette and take the paintbrush... Let's try it on a dry area. Okay, so you can you can really really lift with very with a lot of specificity. You can almost take that away to nothing. That's amazing. That's so cool. This is dry up here. So let's see what happens if we then plop some pink over what's dry, and then quick splosh in a bit of extender as well. At the same time. Here's the sparkly stuff. Oh, that's so pretty. It's so pretty. And this really does have a mind of its own. It's slightly disconcerting, but uh, yeah, okay. I think we're going to be able to manage quite well with this. We get a really delicate colour going on here as well. So now I'm thinking to myself, I would really like to mix this dark purple colour. So I've mixed up what I think might be a reasonable purple here. I may be completely wrong. Look at this. <laughs> so I've got the extender here and I'm just going to use the, the end of the paintbrush as suggested and you can see what it's doing here. In the wetter parts it's really spreading out and in the drier parts it's not spreading quite so much. But you can see I've successfully made quite a nice purpley colour there. you would be quite impressed with that. So yeah, overall, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to enjoy this. I'm enjoying the range of colours that we've got with the inks, you know, like the different shades, because this is a really delicate pink out here. Obviously, that's a lot of extender and a little bit of the sparkly stuff as well. My concern is, though, with the sparkly one, you're not going to be able to lay that down on top, because when you do, obviously, it's got alcohol in it, and it will reactivate and dilute what's going on underneath. Now, this is almost dry in here. So I'm just going to pop a tiny bit of extender into the sparkly one. It's just like one or two drops. And sort of reconstitute it a little bit. And I just want to see what happens if I'm going to paint this on. And again, I need to pick a spot that's dry. That's pretty dry. Yeah, see, I was hoping for maybe some precision. 
Um, but a, being able to keep the colour underneath and we can't do that because obviously there's alcohol in this too. So I'm starting to formulate a plan in my head. Uh, I am impressed with this. So this this is just constitutes good clean fun as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> or, or very not clean fun as the case may be. But this is definitely, definitely good. And the paper seems to just take this like a boss. I see the paper is very thin. It's only 100 GSM, but it's very, very smooth and it's got a sort of coating on it and it's obviously designed for this purpose. If I just tilt that in the light, you can see all the spangly bits where I've, <laughs> where I've put stuff in, which is really, really cool. Um, it definitely, it's definitely, uh, there's a learning curve to this. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Just for gauging drying times and that kind of thing. So I'm going to start with this, this really deep purple that I've mixed here. I'm just going to bulk this up a little bit. Um, and then I've got a little bit. I actually feel better using the pipette onto the paper than I do these nozzles. I don't know why. Let's have a little go. Now the really nice thing is we've got 10 sheets here. So if this is a total disaster, you know, at least I've got another 8 attempts after this. So that's really good. I don't need the extender just now, I don't think. The other feeling I get from this is you really need to plan from the beginning and know exactly what you're doing um, in terms of what combination of colours because of the drying time. Because, okay, you can reactivate it, but you're going to be using extender, which is going to dilute out your colour as well. Grab some of this and I'm just going to go for it. Oh, lordy. Okay, and uh, I really need to gauge my um, quantities better as well. So that on its own's not done much, which is absolutely fine. Stuff is amazing, it really is. I'm, I'm in love with the, the sparkly stuff. So I've mixed in a little bit of the sparkly stuff to the purple. And I'm just gonna, whoa, oh my goodness, think I'm in love. <laughs> think I'm in love. So I don't know if you're able to see the, the sparkles that are going on here, but there's a substantial amount of it. Ah, this is, this is so cool. This is like, I'm having the best fun already. I'm going to leave this turned this way. And again, I'm going to do exactly what I did before. And I'm going to have this as like, um, like a border all the way around almost. Kind of let that do its thing. Give my sparkles a bit of a shake. Okay. Oh, this stuff is everywhere. <laughs> this is so messy. So, so messy. I've got an old t-shirt on as well, just in case, because I'm... Uh, I'm not known for my um, my tidiness when it comes to stuff like this. I'll give this a good mix. Oh, this is still quite wet down here as well. I have a feeling that maybe using the, the sparkly stuff is kind of doing the same thing as the extender. And I'm just going to start plonking in. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. So I want to mix up a slightly less purpley version. <laughs> less purpley, oh dear. I don't even know what colour this is going to come out. Yeah, this is more like a... We're, we're heading more back to towards the magenta. That was far too much. Yeah, my, something's happened to my sparkly stuff. It's blocked. I don't know if you saw that. That went everywhere. Oh, we're, in, we're into the mega sparkles now. I would just like to point out I am having so much fun right now. <laughs> like, I really am. Uh, hats off to anybody that actually does this for a living. Right, my... my uh, my sparkly one is like completely blocked, like absolutely 100% blocked. So I'm just going to take the cap off it, not permanently because I'll probably die of fume inhalation. Um, but I'll take my sparkly pipette and just stick that in there. Oh, look at that in there. Oh, it looks amazing. And I could use that to add the sparkles. I'm actually blocking off that with that, so that's okay. Even just watch and see when you add the sparkly one to the... Um, do you know, to the ink in the palette over here. See, just watching it do its thing, it's fascinating. It's so cool. And I'm just going to dip straight into this other purple colour. Oh, oh, oh. I, do, I do have a bit of a leakage down the bottom here. So I'm just going to, uh, I've got a rag here. I'm just going to soak that up with that. Okay, this is more or less dry up here. It's very shiny. I kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to grab some of this blue now as well. Oh. I'll just put a few spots of that in a few places. If we're going to make this galaxy -y, then there's going to have to be a lot of sparkles. This blue is lovely though, like I'm really enjoying this blue colour. I kind of need you to go into the middle, guys. Where's my straw, quick. That way. This definitely doesn't go the way you think it's going to go in terms of like where you think the ink is going to go. It's not very predictable. I suppose that's all. That's the fun though, isn't it? And I want to use some of this extender. Okay, so there's the extender in this one. 
And I want to see what's going to happen now if I... Because I think this is going to spread out like a lot. If I start in the middle here, I just want to see what this does. So I've got the tiniest amount of extender. And I want to start like kind of trying to soften this up here. So I'm going to plonk some of the extender in there. And just sort of dot it about and see what <laughs> see what happens. It's made more of a marbling effect rather than a, a sort of cloudy effect. Maybe I need to maybe I need to use the pipette for this. Maybe that's a better idea. This is what I'm saying. Like this is complete exploration. There's there's no two ways about this. Um, I'm gonna stick some of the extender in there. I'll just do that one patch just now and then I can see what happens. But the lines that I've made in here with the extender, they haven't really lifted anything. I'm assuming it's because I've flooded the, the page so much uh, with, the, with this ink. Um, I'm really not sure what's dry and what's not dry because it looks very shiny. Like there's no real indication other than sticking your foot. Do you know what? Let's just do it. Well, now that's quite an interesting effect. Oh, look. Found a happy accident. <laughs> this is still wet because you can see my fingers like making puddles. That's really interesting. Oh, this is fascinating. All right, guys, I'll see you in about three weeks when I'm finished here. I know the light's shining on this part here. Um, there's I can't even tilt this because obviously it's gonna it's gonna make things go places that I maybe don't want them to go. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on here. I'm not um like maybe I just need to be a bit more. I don't know. I I did I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I don't. The drier the ink is, though, the more you have to work. Obviously, with the the extender, if you're going to use it for use it for lifting purposes, but I would imagine that would give you a much more solid result compared to using it while the the ink is still very wet. Here's Wu coming. Hi Wu. She's out in the hallway, and she will be be kept out there so that this stuff doesn't blow her head off. <laughs> It's my little Jack Russell, my geriatric Jack Russell. So the part up here, uh, it's just kind of like pulled out and then where I've stuck my finger in is left quite an interesting pattern. And down here, it's just all like folded back in on itself. Um, again, I can't really show you, I can't tip anything. But this section here, I had a few little marks in it and that's completely gone. So we're, yeah, we're doing well. <laughs> so if I dip the opposite end in now, as suggested, and we'll do it in a, in a fairly dry section. This bit's still very wet down here. I can see it's coming out now. So I've put a bit of the extender down here. And I just want to see how much that's going to dilute that there. Yeah, right, okay, you can see that part there, what I'm doing there. I want to leave this middle part to dry now though. And I want to see if I can lift even more of that off the middle there and get my little swirl going in the middle. Now see, that's the interesting thing about this as well. Although you're putting things down where you think you're putting things down, you've actually got to wait to see how it settles when it spreads out because it doesn't necessarily stay put, especially if there's extender involved, which is really interesting as well. But I seem to have, this side's much better and I've got much smoother transitions going on and that's because I did everything when it was wet on this side. This side that's dry, um, that's obviously not been the case. So really ideally we want to be working when everything's wet if we want to get some nice smooth transitions, which I feel like I've got in this corner. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to call this a practice because I want to get more of this kind of feel. So I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do it on a, a fresh sheet of paper, which is just as well. We've got all these sheets of paper. OK, fresh gloves, better organised. Got all my inks laid out this time beside me here. Um, I found out what's wrong with my sparkly one. They've misjudged the size of the ball bearing. Um, it's small enough to wedge in the cap. So uh, it keeps blocking up. You can blow it out though. It's just a bit of a pest. They should have made the ball bearing a bit bigger. So that's a bit unfortunate. But still, anyway, right, I'm ready to go again. So I'm going to grab my, my dark purpley colour here. So everything has sparkles in it this time. And I am just going to go for it. I think my pipette's got a sprung a leak. Yeah, it has. Okay, and I still haven't mixed enough ink. That's crazy. I thought I was going to have way more of that dark blue than that. 
But I'm working fast here because I want to catch all this while it's still wet. And see, by flooding the paper, I'm giving myself half a chance as well. Oh, look at all the sparkles. And then I'm going to go straight into the, the magenta. Pop that down. And then I'm going to grab my, my Caribbean blue and that's going to go in the middle. Oh my God, I've just... <laughs> Did you see that? I've now contaminated everything. Oh, wow. Well, this is not for the faint-hearted. Okay, right. Good. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is amazing. Uh, right, okay. Starting to dry in the middle. Yes! This is exactly what I was after. I need to stir up some of this sparkly stuff. So I'm using this in the blue pipette because I'm going to plonk this in the middle. Now see that when that's spurting there? Do you see the little marks it's making? Okay, so I've got a rag catch all this stuff that's going on in the corner. I don't want this huge barrier that's going on here, so I'm going to use my paintbrush just to take away. See where it's showing up here? I don't know if you can see me doing that, but I'm doing like a swirly motion with my straw. Okay, yeah, that's that's much more of what I was looking for. I have to admit though, this is starting to give me a bit of a sore head. Like I can feel it. I don't know whether it's all the blowing though. Okay, yeah, this is this is much more what I had in mind. So the nebulous area is kind of this paler part in the middle, and then everything else is doing its funky little thing around the outside. So I'm still going to go ahead uh, with the retarder. Oh, this is a freaking riot. I do have on hand, which I find is working quite well, I always have a bottle of surgical spirit. Uh, what do you guys call it in the States? Uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, I've always got a bottle of this and it's just in case I make a mistake with, uh, with alcohol markers or I have a little bit of an explosion or for when I am refilling markers. So I found that that's quite helpful. See if you just want to clean out one one little section obviously you can get in there with a with a cotton bud or a little cotton pad like i've got here so there we go i've just cleaned that up to make sure that there's no contamination and it means that if i want to use my paintbrush with the retarder which is the next thing i'm going to do then i've got a nice little clean space there so back to the let me just make sure i've got the right one yeah the extender now i think i want to let it dry a little bit more so i'm going to go and take a, a breather i'm actually going to go and stand outside although this place is ventilated i feel like i could do with a bit of fresh air so i'll do that really quickly and then i'll come back and i'll try and work in my, my swirly vortex in the middle and we can see how we get on with that okay so in my absence there's something really weird and funky going on up here i don't really understand what's happened up here but i'm i'm just gonna let it go because down here is absolutely perfect like it really is and I'm going to try and do this vortex effect. So literally, like virtually no extender on my brush. And we'll just clear out a wee space in the middle there. Take out some of those sparkles. It's almost as if I feel like there's too much ink here because it's actually cutting a line, you know, like a channel through it rather than just diluting some of it. See here where it's still wet, I seem to be getting on better. So it's back to the same thing. Use the use the uh, the the extender to begin with, and then you won't have the problems that I'm having just now. But see, this is all new. This is like a complete learning curve for me. And I'm this is this is great fun. Bar the smell, which I have to say is starting to get to me a wee bit. Um, that's why I had to take a break outside there. Um, apart from that, this is yeah. I, I haven't enjoyed myself this much in ages. I mean, I usually do enjoy myself when I'm doing art stuff, obviously, but this is like a special kind of fun, this. Okay, so now that that's going on, I'm going to grab my, uh, my sparkly stuff again. Hopefully this isn't going to get wedged in the, in the nozzle again. And I'm just letting that drip. Because again, this'll, this will dilute what's underneath if it's still wet, because... Obviously, it's still got alcohol in it, and alcohol dilutes other alcohol. This is kind of ugly down here, this part. It's kind of ugly over here. And then, this really isn't doing this justice, see, because of the way the light's shining on it. Can you see the part under the shadow of my hand there? It's actually really, really dark. 
Um, I might just turn the lights off once I'm finished I might just put the overhead lights off so that you can see it because this is very reflective and obviously I can't really show you till it's dry so the last thing I want to do now is get rid of my contaminated extender in here again just use my little little cotton pad and with a, with a tiny bit more of this uh, this extender I'm just going to pop the end of my brush in it who needs a fine liner? we don't need fine liners and I just want to see what happens if we do this very, very sparingly. I think there was one there at one point as well, wasn't there? Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> right, I am going to call it done at that. I'm going to leave this to dry completely and then I'll be able to show you it properly. But I'm just going to turn off the overhead light just now. So there you go, you can see that better. You know, in terms of the colours around the outside. So I'm all cleaned up now and I have my dry images here. So I've given these obviously a bit of time to do their thing. So this was the original test sheet and uh, you can see the lovely glossy finish that this ink has. And this was just sort of my little tester bits and pieces, which was an interesting wee experiment in itself, I have to say. Now, this was my second attempt here. And uh, I have to say, I'm quite pleased with it. And if I tilt it here, especially in this area here, you can see the sparkles. But look at the finish and the sheen on these. It's absolutely lovely. And there's lots of interest going on here as well. And I've got this random white patch here, which I quite like as well. Um, so I actually think that's turned out a lot better than I thought it would. And this was my final one here, which I feel like I've just overworked it. Uh, if I kind of zoom out a wee bit, you'll be able to see these two side by side. So I actually like this one better in the end up, but I think that the the outside of this, you know, the sort of richness and blending of the colours is, is much, much better. And it's very, very galaxy-like. And then I've got this sort of abomination that happened here. But what is interesting about this one is if you turn over onto the back, and uh, if you look at the artwork it's created by itself on the back now this kind of reminds me of like pillars or something i'm not entirely sure but so accidentally i like that side better and i would actually frame that although it's not very galaxy-esque i kind of enjoy it so yeah there you go that is my uh, my attempt with the july scroller box in terms of the inks they seem reasonably good quality obviously i've got nothing to compare them to because it's not something i've ever used but they were easy to work with, they're really easy to dilute and bar the ball bearing getting stuck in the nozzle and the um, the sparkly one, they were, they were great, they were absolutely fine. The paintbrush stood up to the task really well as well and I have cleaned it all now and it's cleaned up beautifully so quite impressed with that as well and obviously the paper seems to be perfect for this sort of thing. So all in all I'm impressed with the supplies in the box, I've had an absolute ball today. Is this something that I'll be doing again? The answer is probably no, just for the simple fact that the fumes that come off this stuff is absolutely stupendous. And even though I've been well ventilated today and I've stepped outside, I've already got a sore head. Um, for those of you that don't have a problem with smelly things, by all means, have, have a shot. Like, seriously, have a shot because it is great fun. It really is incredibly good fun. Um, I think I'll stink the stink. <laughs> there, stink. Oh, that's too much talk about fumes. I think I will be sticking the alcohol inks in the stash shop. Obviously, they'll be well packaged if any of you decide you'd like to pick them up and have a go. But yeah, that's it for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the box. This is something a little bit different. We haven't had something like this before. So I'd love to hear what you think about this, whether it's something that you would like to try or whether it's something that you do already. And uh, if you've got any comments on any techniques or anything that would help me out here as well, that would be quite interesting to hear too. So all that's left to do is thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe, take care of each other, and I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Have a good day, everyone, and bye-bye for now.